Hi, everyone. Welcome to HR Works, brought to you by BLR. I'm your host, Steve Bruce. HR Works provides clear, relevant, actionable information on topics that matter to HR professionals. When you're armed with best practices, plus the knowledge to keep your organization in compliance, HR works. HR professionals and in-house trainers know that in a world of nonstop communication and distractions, effective employee training can be challenging. But our guests today have experience in making training more engaging and therefore more memorable and more impactful by incorporating storytelling. Sharon Lucas, president of CDT3 Training, offers over 28 years of experience in the field of organizational learning and development, facilitation, executive coaching, and instructional design. For the past 16 years, she's partnered with a multitude of organizations to provide innovative learning and organization solutions as a consultant. Clients include GE, Synchrony Financial, Toyota, Eaton, Dick's Sporting Goods, and many others. Jessica Dupree's, a graphic recorder, passionately developed her skill in drawing before joining the team of live sketch artists at Walt Disney World in 2010, drawing caricatures of guests from all over the world to put herself through university. She earned her BFA with a concentration in figurative oil painting and a double major in art history from Florida Southern College. She currently works as a freelance artist and art instructor who brings her engaging creativity and quick sketching skills to assignments for clients such as Walt Disney World, Geico, Petco, GE, and Microsoft. She works with the CDT3 team as a consultant in graphic recording. And I'll note that Sharon and Jessica will be presenting a session entitled The Art of Storytelling, The Psychology of Learning, and How to Incorporate Memorable Vignettes into Training Content at BLR's 2017 Workforce L&D Conference to be held November 16th and 17th in Las Vegas. After our interview, we'll let you know how HR Works listeners can save when they register for the conference. Sharon and Jessica, welcome to HR Works. Yes, thank you for having us. Thanks for having us on today. Uh, what are some of the obstacles to effective employee training, and how does storytelling overcome those obstacles? Yeah, so Steve, there can be a multitude of obstacles to effective training that can stem from how well training initiatives are supported and what resources are available, but even in organizations where training is a priority, facilitators still face obstacles in the classroom keeping students engaged. Um, in my experience, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a feat to keep them engaged for an entire day, two days, and three days of training, and, and they can disengage if the delivery method includes too much telling or, or just by PowerPoint, if you will. And then in addition to that, we're competing with everyday distractors for the learners. It's, it's not like their day job goes away. And, of course, there's the ever-present technology uh, right there at their side. And, uh, and we also are competing with a basic short attention span. So research tells us that adult learners can only sustain attention for about 20 minutes, sometimes less. And if the information you're trying to convey to them goes beyond that 20 minutes and it's not interactive or compelling, then you have a pretty good chance of losing the learner. So for us, understanding this has led to um, us being more innovative in our design and facilitation of learning and development, and we do this by incorporating techniques that grab the learner's attention. And we, we keep that engaging and relatable to the learner, and storytelling is one of those methodologies that we use. So we, we know that stories allow us to tap into the heart of the learner, which provides a path for conveying a deeper message based on emotion. The learners retain the feelings and emotions from a story, contributing to a longer-lasting application of the content versus being lectured at, if you will. Well, great. That's good background then. Now, what are the elements of a great story uh, as it relates to using them with employee training? Yeah, so, yeah, to me, the 
primarily the story has to be relevant. It, it has to wrap back around to what your original point is. And the, the purpose of telling a story is to visually demonstrate the concept you're trying to convey, and at the same time, you're, you're trying to emotionally connect so the student retains the content. Um, it, but in addition to that, I think it has to follow some basic rules. Uh, it has to have an opening, a middle, and an end uh, to the story. And one more element I'd like to mention is keep it short and stay on point. If, if the story goes on for too long, then you're right back to where you started with a disengaged learner. So it has to be uh, relevant and, and short and sweet. Okay, and then... Um how important is it to understand uh, learning theory about how people learn before you undertake uh, any type of training? And, and how do you apply uh, this knowledge when you're crafting a story? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, you know, learning styles tell you how people acquire and process information, which is pretty critical if you want the message to stick. Um, you know, there are pre- three primary learning styles that most people are aware of. Uh, visual, where students have to, to see it, and auditory, where they prefer to learn by speaking and listening, and kinesthetic is the third, where people prefer to learn by kind of a hands-on approach, they just have to, to do it themselves. So knowing this, um, you can add the elements required to, to help the message stick for the learners. So I'll, g- I'll give you a couple of examples for a kinesthetic learner, you know, I want to make sure that they're actively involved in the learning through games or activities, experiments, and for an auditory learner, I'm going to make sure that we're incorporating group discussions, possibly music videos, um, and if I have a visual learner, I'm going to um, make sure that those pictures, that's why PowerPoint can be uh, so relevant, maybe reading an article, demos, or graphic recording, uh, which draws out the content. And um, stories come in because they appeal to all of these styles. I just have to make sure that I incorporate the additional elements to make that story come alive for all the learning styles. Okay, so you're an advocate of incorporating visual presentation in the learning process, and that's regardless of the learning style or the preference of your audience, I gather. So can you tell us why that is? Yeah, so, you know, as I mentioned, we do know that there are three primary modalities of learning, but the reality is most people tap into at least two of those learning styles, which means the majority of learners will respond favorably to visual representation of the content. So by adding graphic recording to the learning process, we're providing a, a pictorial aspect which brings the concepts and the learning points alive, and the learners can connect with that content on multiple levels. And not only are they hearing it, but they're seeing it. It is the, it's the visual story. So this increases the retention of the content and leads to what we, we really want uh, through training, which is application and behavioral change. Well, thanks. Now, uh, let's find out about uh, Jessica's role. Jessica, as we mentioned, you're a graphic recorder. Can you tell us more about the work you do? Absolutely, Steve. So my background as a caricature artist has really made the transition to graphic recording pretty seamless for me uh, because the narrative aspect of live caricature has developed my skills in the visual art of storytelling. So my experience translates well from live drawing in entertainment setting at these special events that I do the caricatures at to um, a more corporate environment at these training sessions and workshops where clients bring me on to do the graphic recording. So graphic recording makes an impact on audiences primarily because the drawings themselves are engaging the viewers in real time. So the finished image can also be beneficial too uh, because right after hearing the presentation, it helps reinforce what they've just heard and makes the content more memorable for a longer period of time. Well, I wish we could uh, see you in action, Um, but could you share... Yeah, it's it's super fun for me, too, actually. (laughs) Could you share examples of when organizations might benefit from using verbal storytelling in combination with visual or graphic recording in the learning environment? Definitely. 
Um, so the visual nature of graphic recording presents many benefits in a learning environment. And one of the primary reasons is because illustrations are a really quick and really efficient way to capture ideas um, versus just writing them down word for word. So during a live session, I'm able to take the real-time storytelling as well as conversations around the content that kind of happen um, fluidly and translate these key ideas very quickly into these visual images which make up the graphic recording. So um, an additional benefit is that the participants are watching the process itself unfold and because they can immediately see the conversation being captured graphically on paper, it helps with that engagement and um, with conveying the message better. So they're able to connect with not only hearing the story, but also seeing it as Sharon mentioned earlier. Um, and this keeps them actively engaged, like we've been um, touching on. And it also helps motivate the learning process um, because, you know, that element does keep them on their toes and following along. Um, sometimes I'll guess how I'm going to interpret it. And that interest, that peak of their interest helps keep them um, on task and engaged. And another thing that's so great about the graphic recording is that um, you don't only need to have, um, let's say, a training session or a lecture going on. You could also employ it to convey a company story. So um, you can kind of uh, discuss what their history is as a company and come up with a graphic recording relating to that, and then use that as training material as well. So it doesn't just have to be in a classroom setting. Okay, so this is uh, this is very very intriguing to me. Um, now, just further along that line, your bio notes that you illustrate core ideas and values to aid in information retention and clarity of concepts uh, for your clients. Can you provide us an example of that? Yeah, absolutely. So, for example, when a group of leaders are meeting to establish their mission or their vision and the values of their organization, um, they're generally engaged in a brainstorming session. So it's my role to listen really intensely and capture the conversation as it occurs into a string of images and keywords. So creating a visual story of the process, if you will. And this allows them to actually see their, uh, their ideas and concepts come to life. So they have more of a personal connection to it for that reason. Um, and then they also walk away with that permanent um, artifact, you could say, this pictorial map of the vision, which also keeps them excited and commitment um, comes through to what their goal is. Um, so clients can also keep this graphic recording on display after the presentation for the rest of their team to refer back to. Um, and that also helps with keeping the enthusiasm up for whatever their project is. Well, I like that. And I guess uh, you've convinced me that um, the storytelling and, and graphic <laughs> technique, well, it seems like it's ideal when you're doing in-person group training, but how does it work uh, with individualized training or, or other types of training? Yeah, so see, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, you know, in, in my opinion, storytelling in person, you know, certainly allows for the live animation and interaction, especially when combined with what Jessica was talking about in the graphic recording. But stories can be utilized um, as well as in the online options. So think of something like The Legend of Zelda, which is one of the top video games, and, and why that's so popular. It, it, because it puts you into the story. You become either the character or you're interacting with it as you go. And so in the learning and development world, online training courses, which have become a, a popular venue for providing content, have taken notice of this and create content around a storyline that the student can participate in while absorbing the information. Um, and I think this is particularly effective when you have mandatory training, such as compliance topics, where the possibility of uh, disengagement is even higher. Um, so by presenting information like that in a captivating storyline, you increase the chances of the student remaining interested in learning the content that you intend for them to learn. 
Well, this is really great. Um, any final tips from either or both of you on uh, best practices to share with companies that want to liven up their training or increase the effectiveness of it by incorporating storytelling? Yeah, so, you know, not everybody thinks that they can tell great stories and might avoid using stories altogether. Um, but I think, you know, the good news here is that storytelling can be done in many different ways, and I think it can be learned. You know, I personally like sticking to true stories that I've personally experienced because, for me, they're a lot easier to remember, and I can, I can really connect emotionally and therefore tell it with a lot more conviction. Um, I can also pull those stories out as I need them. So if I'm if I'm facilitating a session and I see that my point isn't coming across, I might pull a story out to to help that content come alive, like we mentioned earlier. But uh, but for folks that are not really sure how to start, you know, my recommendation would be start collecting stories to use for uh, for the future. You know, there's newspaper articles. Um, maybe legend type stories, sports stories that you find interesting. Um, just make sure it's something that you can relate to uh, because I think you'll have a better chance of using that story effectively. Well, thanks so much. This, uh, Sharon and Jessica, both, um, this is great information uh, about using storytelling to make employee learning and training more engaging and effective. And I think Chris and I are both. Uh, very much looking forward to attending your session uh, in Las Vegas. And I'll just uh, repeat that for everybody. It's the 2017 Workforce L&D Conference. It's November 16th and 17th at the Paris Las Vegas Hotel. Uh, you'll get access to proven methods for leveraging technology and applying cutting-edge strategies to enhance organizational performance. And for HR Works listeners... Uh, $100 off the conference price. Just type HR Works, all one word, in the discount code box when you register. You could find out more about that about workforcelearning.blr.com. Listeners, please let me know what HR Works should cover next. S. Bruce at blr.com. Thanks for listening. This is Steve Bruce for HR Works. <laughs>